Hey guys, what is up? I am in Japan. Wow! I, I'm more excited about that than I probably sound. It's just I've been here for like two weeks now. I've been here for two weeks. That's pretty cool. Two weeks today. So the reason why this video is coming so late is because I only just got Wi-Fi in my apartment today. But welcome to the very first episode of... I've been so excited to use that, you have no idea. <laughs> Huge thank you to my friend uh, Washu Takahashi on Instagram for making that little intro for me. You'll be seeing that a lot over the next year. Um, I'm not sure if uh, she still has commissions open for um, like videos, but I will link to her Instagram anyway so you can see and check out her other stuff because she's very cool. So today's video is going to be all about my application to the JET program, uh, going from the application form to the interview to the day that I found out I was on JET. So this was all filmed in real time. I filmed the day before I posted my application, the day of my interview, after the interview, and then the day I found out that I got onto JET. I did intend to film the day that I found out where I was going, um, but I never actually got around to that. So I'll explain that at the end of the video. But yes, I hope you guys enjoy that. And if you are planning on going on JET or applying on to JET or um, if you found out that you've got through the first part and you want to know a bit about the interview or anything like that, then hopefully this video will be useful. So yes, uh, here we go, traveling back in time to November last year. November 2018 is where our story begins, so hope you guys enjoy. Hey guys, this is really weird because if anyone's watching this, that means I've actually been accepted for the JET program. That's weird. <laughs> so the date is the, well it's now after midnight, so it is the 13th of November 2018 and I am, um, I have really bad lighting in here, I do apologise, I have just finished printing out my four copies of everything that I need for my application form. This is my number one, your number one has slightly more in it, so we've got my uh, main application form thingy that you fill in online including the medical form and the what's the word the authorization and release form which i think just says like i am who i say i am um i've got my personal statement my academic transcript the photocopy of my degree certificate the photocopy of my passport and my references i don't have the postcard yet i'm going to get that in the morning and then all of these three have everything exactly the same except they don't have the references. They are in sealed envelopes right at the top there. I've got one from my university lecturer, one of my university lecturers, and I've got one from um, someone from work. And I've also got another copy here of everything apart from the degree certificate um, because I only photocopied four copies of that, not five, and the references again because obviously they're sealed in that envelope over there. They recommend you keep a copy for yourself just in case. And there is Trixie Mattel's face because I'm watching Drag Race. <laughs> it was really stressful trying to get everything together. Um, so if you're doing JET or any, um, like applying to, to go work abroad or study abroad, I would imagine is a very similar situation. Um, be better prepared in advance than I am. With my degree certificate, for example, you have to, um, Get it photocopied. In my work, I don't have a photocopier that photocopies A3, so I had to ask a friend if I could go to her work and use her photocopier. Nicola, if you're watching this, thank you. And uh, references, uh, you need to make sure you've got two from two different places, and the person doing the reference needs to know that they need to have the original plus three photocopies. They need to sign over the seal of the envelope so that they know that you, the applicant, haven't tampered with it. So I have no idea what my references say, which is really annoying, I really want to know. I needed my academic transcript, but the copy that I got when I graduated um, isn't hand signed, it was digitally signed, and the application form states it needs to be hand signed. Also states you don't get it back uh, when you send it. So I had to send away for another transcript, which 
I mean, I think I'm the most hated person in the University of Glasgow right now because of all the trouble I caused trying to get this transcript. And I had to specially ask for it to be hand signed because they don't do that as standard, but I had to explain that for this application I needed it. And God bless the woman on the phone, she put a little note next to my name and said that this needed to be hand signed. And lo and behold, when it arrived this morning, it was. I, uh, I'm hopefully going to get this posted away tomorrow. I have the biggest envelope I've ever purchased in my life, which apparently can hold 400 sheets of A4 paper, which is going to be not far off at this point. Um, oh yeah, the other thing is I bought a bunch of paper clips and it, oh, and it turns out you do not use paper clips for this, you use fold back clips. So I've wasted a lot of money, well not a lot of money, but I've wasted money on paper clips that did not need to be spent and now I need to go to Tesco first thing uh, tomorrow morning before work and get fold back clips. So <laughs> double check everything that you have everything. I will be sending this off hopefully tomorrow. If I miss the post office tomorrow, I'll be sending it off on Wednesday at the latest. So it is definitely going to be in London by the 22nd, which is great. I mean, the next bit of this video will be me finding out if I have an interview. <laughs> hmm. Well, if you're watching this, that means I got an interview. <laughs> That's so weird. <laughs> All right. Hey, -o. so I just got back from my interview with the JET program. Yay, I survived. I'm proud of myself. So this is just gonna be really quick because I'm shattered and I really want to just like get my pajamas on. <laughs> Today is the 17th of January. My interview was in Edinburgh. You can choose between Edinburgh or London. I think I mentioned that. I don't remember the last thing I filmed was a few months ago, so I don't know. So I picked Edinburgh because it was closer. It was still a long day of traveling though. I had to go to England, i.e. Carlisle, and then get a train back up to Edinburgh in order to get there. So that was kind of weird. Our interviews were running late. Um, so my interview was supposed to be at 20 to 4. I didn't actually get in until after 5 o'clock, which was when my train to get back home was due. So that was a little bit frustrating, but I still managed to get at the next train and come back down, so that was fine. Um, this is what I wore. I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but it is a blazer, a white blouse. I've got, I'm gonna try and show my skirt, like just sensible shoes, and just a little bit of jewellery. I've got a, uh, oh, hang on, there we go. I've got a wee silver necklace. I had my watch on. Um, very simple makeup, which is probably all vanished by now, but nothing showy. And I still had a bow in because I have to. Oh, and earrings, I had my earrings on as well because I feel like they make me look slightly more grown up. And I had my contacts rather than my glasses just because I prefer how I look with my contacts on. When you went in, um, you first had to do your grammar test, which they gave you 10 minutes for. I think I did about three, um, but they gave you the time to read over it. I had three sets of words and I had to circle which one was spelt correctly, was the first bit. And it was like, I think it was like irresponsible, um, I can't remember the other two, but it was words that, you know, you would quite easily put an extra N in or put an extra R in or something, you know, if you weren't paying attention. So you had to circle the right one for them. You then had to fill in the blank in a sentence with the correct word. So like weather or weather, so W-E-A-T-H-E-R or W-H-E-T-H-E-R. Um, I can't remember the other two for that again, but there was three for that. Then it was a passage and you had to, a very short passage, you had to correct any mistakes in there so there was some apostrophes missing, there were some apostrophes that shouldn't have been there, uh, incorrect punctuation, incorrect word order, so it described a red and white big picnic blanket and in English it would be more correct to say a big red and white picnic blanket because of reasons. I don't, I can't even explain why, which is bad, I probably should be able to explain why, but as a native speaker, you just kind of know what order you're supposed to describe stuff in, I guess. There was one spelling one, and it was racket, as in like a tennis racket, and it was spelt wrong on the <laughs> paper, so I had to spell it right, and I forgot how to spell it right. <laughs> and then I checked on my phone when I got out, and I spelled it wrong. I missed the K out, the C out, sorry. I'm so annoyed at myself. And then it was the actual interview. So I was interviewed by two gentlemen, a Japanese gentleman and an English gentleman who is a JET alum. And the questions were kind of box standard. It was why Japan, why JET? Um, I was opposed to going with a private school or with another company. What are you worried about, if anything, about going to Japan? 
um, because I have experience teaching younger pupils, because I'm a primary teacher, they asked, um, how would you feel about teaching older pupils? I got asked what Japanese news interests you, and that was a question that kind of threw me. I wasn't expecting that. So I did manage to come up with some answers, but I wasn't as prepared for that question as I would like to have been. So that's definitely one I would advise looking up, especially if you're getting interviewed in the UK. I'm not sure what it's like in other countries. Um, if they ask that question or not, I don't know. They give me a kind of a scenario. So like imagine you're in an elementary school and not, you're used to teaching like one class of kids, but then they suddenly bring all three like second grade classes in and put them in the gym hall and you have to teach all 90 of them something with English, what would you do? And I was like, games and songs, games and songs. I would use games and songs. That was kind of my seller, I guess. Um, and I kind of described some lessons that I've used for French in my school as a teacher, but I would just have like adapted them into Japanese, well, into English, obviously. Um, and then he did something similar There was like, right, what about with high school kids if you've got some who are there because they have to be there because it's a requirement for them to take English but they don't really want to be there. How would you cope with that and uh, all that good stuff? Oh yeah, they asked me what stuff outside of work I would want to take part in, um, in terms of, you know, Japanese culture and stuff. And I mentioned um, Shodo, which is calligraphy, the tea ceremony, um, which I would really be interested in learning how to do and uh, taiko drums because I tried taiko drums at SunnyCon three years ago and it was a lot of fun. And then my last question was, how would you continue to, you know, kind of participate if you like in JET after you've left Japan? So how would you continue those connections? And I spoke about how while I'm out there, I've already discussed with senior staff at the school I work in currently in the UK to, if I get to go to Japan, to set up links between whatever school I end up in and our school so that we can have some sort of like communication program and stuff like that. Um, and how once I was back in the UK, I would like to continue that. They seemed to like that answer because I got very excited about that. Um, I made them laugh a couple of times, which I think is probably a good sign. I don't know how well I've done and I won't know till April, which sucks. So it's gonna be a couple of months now of just waiting and finding out eventually, I suppose. So the things I would recommend are if your interview's in the winter, like mine obviously is, um, bring a change of clothes because I didn't bring a pair of trousers, I didn't bring a jacket because I was like dressed professional and I didn't know if I would have somewhere I could leave a jacket or anything. So I literally wore this all day in January in Scotland and it was absolutely freezing. It's been snowing in certain parts of the country today. It's been that cold. So definitely um, bring something to change and just like wear this for the interview and change if you're going to be wondering about a lot which is something I didn't do and also watch the news <laughs> watch the Japanese news I did not get asked to do a mock lesson um, and from what uh, a girl who was there said to me and I don't know how true this is so please don't take this as gospel but they don't ask for mock lessons at the UK jet interview is what she said I don't know if that's true a hundred percent of the time but I wasn't asked she was a jet alum and she wasn't asked when she was interviewed two, three years ago, and the two guys who were before me getting interviewed also weren't asked, so I don't think it happens in the UK. It might just be an American in Australia and New Zealand. I've seen videos of jets from there where they've had to do it. I didn't have to, and no other UK jet alum I've spoken to has had to do one, so I think it might not be done in the UK, which is great because that was the bit that was stressing me out the most. <laughs> Um, but yes, so that was the interview process and I am now going to go and get my pyjamas on because I have got work in the morning. If I get into Jet, I guess you're about to see my reaction to getting onto Jet, so... Uh, probably screaming and maybe slight... with like, undertones of crying. I say undertones, I'll be crying my eyes out. So, yeah, have fun with that if that's what you're about to see. I got it. <laughs> I got an email. It is the 25th of March. I got an email. I'm going to be in Japan. I'm going, to, I got, oh, I, mm. I don't know what to say. I just knew I wanted to film this. I couldn't film the moment I got the email because I didn't have my this phone with me to film on, but honestly, I was a wreck. I wouldn't really want that footage 
anywhere. Um, I phoned my parents. I ran around my work trying to find anyone who was still in the building to tell. I phoned my best friends. I phoned my auntie. And then I got in the car and I put my phone on shuffle to listen to music on the way home. And Mesomoa came on and I think that was when it hit me. Because I realised that the next time I see them will be in Japan. And that was what kind of... I was already crying, but like... <laughs> I can't believe this is actually happening. I can't, I can't, I've never understood better the phrase, I can't even, because that is literally me right now. I can't. I just don't know the end of that sentence. I just can't. Oh, sweet. Oh my gosh. Okay, so basically, right, what happens now? I reply to the email by Thursday to say I want the position, which I'm going to do, like, now. Um... And then I need to get a bunch of documents. I need to get like a medical certificate. I need to get um, my passport photographed. Again, they already have four copies of my passport, but apparently they want another two, but whatever. Um, I'll give them my kidney at this point, let's be honest. Like a kind of formal signature of like, I understand that if I withdraw, I have to pay for my flight back and all that kind of stuff. But I need to get all that stuff sent away before. Well, it needs to arrive in London by the 10th of April, which gives me, I think, about three weeks, I think, if I'm doing that maths in my head right. I still don't know where I'm going. I don't find out specifically where I'm going until May. Apparently is where the placements come out. But my flight date is the 3rd of August. I'm gonna turn this off now. I don't have anything else to say. I just, I, it, I'm going to Japan. I'm gonna and that brings us to now, in August 2019, when I moved to Japan. I am in Yamagata Prefecture, which, as I've been describing to people, is north, but not Hokkaido levels of north. Um, it's basically directly above Tokyo, but it's about a six hour drive, roughly. So it's good though, I'm really enjoying it here and I'll be doing a lot more videos about my life in Yamagata, my life on the JET program and just Japan stuff in general. So yes, I really hope you guys uh, look forward to all of that and look forward to seeing all of my adventures. I have already filmed a video about Tokyo orientation which I will be uploading in the next few days for you guys to see. So yes, thank you very much for watching everybody. I hope you are having a great day wherever you are and I will see you all soon. Bye!